alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Life Faithbook. Previously on the Life Faithbook, we were discussing theological arguments from the book Haq al Yaqeen by Sayyid Shabur. Since it is now Muharram and the season of mourning and the season of Arba'in, we have discussed and continue to discuss different hadith from the book Qamilu Ziyarat by Sheikh Qummi. Inshallah, we'll be discussing more of these hadith and more about the importance of visiting the shrines of Karbala and Najaf. But before we go into our discussion, we would like to take this opportunity to revive a tragic event that occurred in 2006. On the 23rd of Muharram, the famous shrine of Imam Askari and Imam Al Hadi was attacked and destroyed by acts of terrorists, enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. When this occurred, I remember when this occurred, the Ayatollah and the Maraja collectively condemned this atrocious act and also issued a week of mourning for the shrine and for the Imams, holy Imams that are buried. And let us not forget who is buried there, none other than the father and the grandfather of the Imam of our time, may Allah hasten his reappearance. I would like to introduce my guest, my teacher, my colleague. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Banju. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah wa shukar wa adham ala ujurana wa ujurakum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for our grief uh, over the persecution and the martyrdom in particular of Imam al Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt in general. Sheikh, let's discuss what happened, um, you know, 12 years ago on the 23rd of Muharram, Samarra being a very, very important area for us Shia, um, arguably the last place that we have seen our Imam, uh, also a place where Imam Hadi is buried, where Imam Hassan Askari spent a lot of his life uh, in, in the what we call the garrison town, the military compound of Samarra, uh, a place where Imam Mahdi um, was um, hidden, from from the, from the enemies, and and you know it's, it's very very um, holy, very very. Um, there's a lot of events that took place that are very very close to our hearts, especially because this is the Imam of our time. A little bit <coughs> on on Samarra and, and its location. Of course, um, in regards to the city of Samarra, Samarra has always been a strategic city and a city of great importance from a cultural, uh, historical and ideological perspective. If we were to go back to the history of Samarra, and perhaps we've talked about this in uh, different shows, in the regards to the civilization and the contribution towards the greater Babylonian civilization from Samarra, this is something that is separate. But in regards to the history of Samarra, particularly with Ahlul Bayt, as you rightly mentioned, Bani Abbas moves the capital of, their, of the entire Islamic empire from the city of Baghdad to the military garrison of Samarra. And there was a reason for this. The capital of the greatest empire for the known world at that time to move its capital to a military garrison showed the extent of the threat that the leadership of Bani Abbas were exposed to, a threat that they felt they could not protect themselves until and unless they moved the capital of this entire empire within the constraints of a military garrison. And without doubt, as has been indicated in a number of majalis and by a number of scholars, that this fear was due to the ahadith that prophesies the birth of this Mahdi who would fill the earth with peace and justice and eradicate all oppression and tyranny. So they understood that the Mahdi would come and uh, actualize these goals by eradicating their tyranny and eradicating their dynasty. For this was uh, uh, the movement of the capital to Samarra was a reaction due to the fear from the spread of such hadith. So, in a way, they were anticipating the birth of, of, of the Mahdi ah, and preparing Santo. themselves 
for this so-called threat that's going to they believe and there gonna... was a lot of vagueness in regards to the personality of who that Mahdi was in that sense so you're absolutely dead on in regards to the strategy of the city of Samarra needless to say that Samarra being the hub of Tashayu with the presence of Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari uh, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them both the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the teachings the pure teachings of Rasulullah spread across the entire world from the city of Samarra and it is within the city of Samarra that you find that the system of wukala the system of having uh, representatives of the Imams who would then go on to spread the teachings of the Imams and in essence set up a parallel government, a hidden parallel government, parallel to that of Bani Umayyah. All this was coordinated from the city of Samarra. For us in particular and in regards to this um, deadly event that occurred, and a very tragic event in contemporary history. Yes, definitely. The bombing and the destruction of the shrines of Imam al-Askari and Imam al-Hadi. And it is important for us to keep alive this memory because it is this persecution which is a part of our identity and a part of our history which people want to eradicate and we must not let them eradicate. You find our viewers should be aware that the shrine of Imam al-Askari and the Imam al-Hadi was exposed to two sets of explosions. Two attacks. It was subject to two attacks. The first one on the 23rd of Muharram in the year 2006 when this massive explosion happened that demolished the entire Qubba of Imam al-Askari. It came crashing down onto the Dhari'ah. And it is important also for us to know here that within the Dhari'ah, the Dhari'ah itself contains the grave of Imam Ali al-Hadi yeah. salam, The grave of Imam Hassan al-Askari salam. It also includes the grave of Sayyida Narjish, the mother of the 12th Imam, and Sayyida Hakima, the auntie yes. of the 12th Imam. So you find these four graves within this Dhari. So the target was on the target of the family of Imam al-Hadi, Imam al-Askari, with the aim of attacking Imam al-Hujjah, and then attack on Tashayyu, Shiaism in its entirety. So the first attack, we have, as per what is recorded by the security apparatus, okay. that on the 23rd of Muharram in 2006... So this is official security, not like journalism? This is the, no, okay. this is actual uh, reports that were issued from official ministries, governmental ministries okay. from okay. within Iraq, that on the 23rd of Muharram 2006, at 7 a.m., there were a number of terrorists who entered into the haram of Imam al-Askari dressed in military uniform. Okay. So they came in under the guise that these are uh, officials. officials of the army. Yes. And as soon as they entered into the haram, they gathered together the local security, the khuddam of the haram or what was known to be the security apparatus because Samara was very volatile keeping in mind mm -hmm. the fall of Saddam and the rise, uh, the, the counter-attack of the Ba'this yes. and uh, Al-Qaeda. Yes. Samara being a city that was primarily, primarily made up of Sunni and Shia. Mm -hmm. For you have over here that these terrorists come in they round up the security officials of the haram. They tie them up, arrest them, tie them up inside one quarters of the haram. And according to the reports from the forensic department that was able to come to this conclusion by having look at, seen the magnitude of the attack within Samarra, the forensics are of the opinion that 200 kilograms worth of explosives were planted around the Dhari and the Qubba of Imam al-Askari and Imam al-Hadi. As they fled, 
they detonated these explosives and there were two detonations that occurred three minutes apart. The entire Qubba of Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari covered in gold. And Allahu A'lam that the weight of this Qubba may have been in tons. Indeed. That it came crashing down upon the Dhari'ah. Not only did it destroy the Dhari of Imam al-Askari and Imam al-Hadi, but the impact was such that the debris went through the Dhari and into the Sardab. This was the actual destruction of the grave, the actual grave of Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari, such that when the officials came up for the cleanup and when the Shia got together to dismantle all the debris that was there, the Amama of Imam al-Hadi was found. Oh within the debris and this was Amama oh. and the sword of Imam al-Hadi and the dir'a, the armor of Imam al-Hadi and these were things that were uh, kept as treasures within the sardab of uh, the shrine of Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari. An impact to this degree where hundreds of other lives were lost, the surroundings of the destruction and the extent of the destruction was such that even surrounding buildings were affected by this. I think, I think it's really important that we really emphasise that th this is absolutely abominable. Right? As in, um, imagine if something like this happened to the grave of Rasulullah. You know, now it never, may never happen. But if something like that happened to the grave of Rasulullah, Sallallahu that, alayhi wa, alayhi wa, sallallahu wa, alayhi wa alayhi, where his, his, the items that he was buried with were found, th there would be manic in the world. The, the, the people's heads would be cut off. You know? Yeah, akhi. And this is... The hatred against Ahlul Bayt and hatred against the Shias of Ahlul Bayt because not only was this an ideological crime but there was a political motive behind this as well and you find that our Marja'iyah came to the very forefront to ensure that civil war does not erupt inside of Iraq yes. but at the same time for the Shia to be alert at the extent of the attack which the Bani Umayyah and the Bani Abbas of this time are willing to go. You find that the Sardab of Imam al-Hujjah was also damaged uh, in this explosion. Yani, this is an indication that we are waging war against Imam al-Hujjah. We are waging war against the Shias of Ahlul Bayt. And we will come to your quarters and demolish the most sacred aspects of your religion. This was the message that was sent out through the bombings. And it is our marja'iyah collectively that came together to ensure that the right steps are taken to confront this manhaj of bloodshed and at the same time ensure there is no sectarian violence that erupts on the grounds of Iraq. You find that this was one explosion. But you would think that the nawasib would perhaps take a step back because there was global uproar from the Shia in regards to this issue. You would think that they would take step, they would take a step back. La ya akhi. The second bombing took place in Samara again on the 13th June, 13th of June 2007. This first bombing in 2006. For less than a year later, 2007, they came and they planted bombs around the minarets. The minara, the minarets that were so, by the side. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sheikhna, but the reconstruction of the shrine would have been going on at that time. So uh, it, it probably wasn't completely finished. They were still rebuilding. In regards to the reconstruction of the shrine of Samarra, there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of kalam. And uh, uh, there were a lot of barriers and there were lots of bureaucracies that were imposed. And you have to keep in mind that Samarra again was a hotbed where Daesh was uh, using the outskirts of Samarra to attack the Shia and to destabilize Iraq in its, in its entirety. You have to see that the geographic location of Samarra and the threats that, include, that, that, uh, that surrounded or the threats uh, that were launched from within the city of Samarra and around the city of Samarra, perhaps even the logistics to allow the reconstruction of the shrine. That in itself was a challenge, in addition to all the bureaucracies and in addition to the politics 
um, so that happened. So, correct me if I'm so wrong. this was a time, this period, 2006, mm. 2007, between the two bombings of the Haram of uh, Imam al Askari was a very turbulent time from a security perspective. Yes, Shia were gathering there, dismantling the debris, but actual, actual reconstruction of the Haram, we're not able to say, Mia bil Mia, that it had started. So. They've, they've already attacked in 2006, they've already caused so much destruction to the shrine and then a year later they, they come in and, and, and put another explosion there. And can we say it was the same people or...? or the I mean, same mentality. It doesn't make sense, you know, kick someone while they're down. They're, they're probably, it's, you've already done so much damage, why would you want to do...? Habibi Sayyid Mohsin, why should you be surprised when this has the seal and the footprint of Bani Umayyah. Did we find anything in history that shows the actions of Bani Umayyah different from what is happening today? Was it, it not from the characteristics of Bani Umayyah that they would attack the weak and attack the weak when they are down? We have nothing to be surprised. This is history coming alive again, that history of Bani Umayyah and that history of Bani Abbas. For you would think that they would perhaps go back, but la, they are adamant on their stance towards the hatred of Ahlul Bayt. And it is important that our masajid and our marakis concentrate and revive this dhikr of the bombing of Samarra. Because the issue is not about a building or a shrine being destroyed and now it's being Indeed. reconstructed. La is the symbolism behind that message. Number one and number two, an appreciation of your history. Emtum, ya zawar, when you go to Samarra, do not take for granted Samarra. The ability and the luxury, if I could say, you, we have of going to the actual haram. We need to sit back and realize this haram that we are going into has gone through stages of demolition and attacks throughout history. And you will find that this is an important part of our legacy. And even for the zawar that are going today, respected zawar and lovers of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, do not leave Samarra out of your itinerary. Khasatan these days of Arba'een. Many times we think, yes, the traffic to Samarra is too much. The distance towards Samarra is too much. Ya Ikhwani, we are indebted to Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari. We are indebted to Sayyidah Narjis and Sayyidah Hakima. And but the Sardab of Imam al hujja is there. The Sardab of Imam al hujja Yani, one of the last times that he was seen, not Yani that he is hiding inside of that Sardab or that he was never seen anywhere else. La, a part of our historical legacy that marks our ideology. The Imam who is in Ghaiba, this was a place that he was seen. Yalla, and it was made into a Mazar. And you find that this was also attacked. So for us, Samarra is about going there to pledge our allegiance to Imam al hujja Ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif. And everything and anything needs to be done to ensure that the Shia visit Samarra in large numbers. And you have that uh, from the time of the destruction and even before that, Marja'iyah played a great role in reviving the importance of Samarra, the city of Samarra and the shrines of Samarra. You have that in the, with this recent uh, bombings that had happened. You find that the Marja'iyah, for example, of Ayatollah al Uthma, Sayyid Sandik al Shirazi, may Allah grant him and the rest of our virtuous Maraja a long and a healthy life. He took forward the initiative to mark the global day of mourning for Samarra, such that from Karbala al Muqaddas, there would be logistics provided for free for anyone who is inside the city of Karbala or to come and meet in the city of Karbala. And from there, there would be bus loads of Zawar who would be taken at no cost whatsoever under the initiative of the Marja'iya to go to Samarra, to go and revive the Shahada of Imam al Askar inside of Samarra, to revive the Istishhad of Imam al Hadi from Samarra, to ensure that television channels have live broadcast from Samarra, 
to revive the environment and the ziyar of Imam al Hadi and Imam al Askari because such bombings had a great impact on not only the city of Samarra being a city that is abandoned and broken down to rubble, but even within the Shia, this fear and this inability to go and visit Samarra, such that there was a great period of time where people would visit Karbala and Najaf. For example, but would not, and Baghdad and Kazmain, but would not dare to go to Samarra. You find that the Marjaiya came forward and stepped up and said, No, Samarra cannot be neglected. Events such as these, for example. And then you have, for example, dedicating the last Friday of Shahru Ramadan as the day in which the honor and the respect of Imam al Askari and Imam al Hadi is revived, where again masses go for pilgrimage. Uh, to the shrines of Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari. And you have even before this, the revival of Samarra, even almost 200 years ago. You know, Samarra, for a period of time, hosted the Hawza Ilmiya for the Shia. It did, yes. So, just like the way you have the Hawza Ilmiya in Qom, and you have the Hawza Ilmiya in Najaf, yeah. we had many Hawzat that were the core of Shia studies, we had the Hawza in Isfahan, we had the Hawza in Hilla, and similarly you find that after the death of Sheikh Murtada al-Ansari, when uh, the Grand Marja'iyya was taken over by one of his students uh, by, the, by the name of uh, Ayatollah al Uthman, known very famously as Mujaddid al-Awwal al-Shirazi, Mirza Muhammad Hassan al-Shirazi. Great grandfather of the current Marja, uh, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Shirazi. For Ayatollah Mirza Muhammad Hassan al Shirazi, he was the leader number one of the tobacco revolution. Oh, the one in Iran. In yes. Iran. Yes. To ensure that the colonial companies would not have total control of the tobacco industry inside of Iran, which they were using as a foothold to colonize the entire Iran. You have that Ayatollah Mirza Hassan al-Shirazi issued the fatwa for the, that triggered the tobacco revolution. For this same Marja Taklid, during his period of the Marja'iyya, moved and migrated from Najaf al-Ashraf to Samarra. And with him, he established and revived the city of Samarra. Not only did the city thrive as, its, as a city, economically and socially, but you find that an entire jeel generation of ulama were nurtured within this Hawza Ilmiya of Samarra. Oh, and Allah. you can find over here that from, it is events like these that show us the historic importance of the city of Samarra. And again, I emphasize, it is important for us, locally within our centers, brothers and sisters, to revive the dhikr, the commemoration, of the destruction of the shrines of Samarra, number one, and number two, to ensure that Samarra is a confirmed destination within our itineraries when it comes to performing the ziyara of Imam al Hussein. Whenever we go to Karbala, Samarra has to be a stopping point. Not only does it have to be a stopping point, yani a transit. And this is with all love and with all ihtaram to I say, I say this to the zawar of Imam al Hussein and to the leaders of the different kafilas and the hamlas that go out there. Ikhwani Samarra, in my opinion, should not even be a transit point where hours are just spent, two or three hours to do the ziyara and then yalla, we move on to Baghdad and to Kadmain. Why not spend the night inside of Samarra? And the last year, I remember, we were with... Uh, uh, blessed to be with uh, Imam Hussein TV and uh, we were doing recording inside the shrine of Samarra and uh, we spent the entire night in Samarra oh, sure. and the haram was open the entire night this was in the in the days of Ashura and there were groups of Zawar from Iran from Pakistan from Azerbaijan who would spend the entire night in the haram 
and uh, there would be azadari going on and the recitation of Quran and others who are sleeping in the sahan, the ataba provided for them blankets and pillows and food. Allahu Akbar, the ataba was providing for the zawar, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And there are other, I remember we were there, the zawar, there was a group of uh, zawar from Pakistan and perhaps a bus, two buses of maybe 100, 120 people. And they were doing their azadari till 4 in the morning before Salatul Fajr. They asked permission from the Ataba and the food supplies that they have traveled with to feed themselves. They decided that they want to cook this outside. They got permission from the Ataba to cook. They cooked the, the rice, what they uh, commonly call the pilau. Pilau rice, yes. The rice with meat. They cooked it and they distributed it to all the zawar. This is Samar Ra, this is Imam Al Hadi, this is Imam Al Askari. And we need to ensure that through our visitations, we are able to revive the city of Samar Ra in its entirety. Inshallah, Asan Sheikh, Asan, thank you very much. We are due for a short break now, but inshallah, we'll be carrying on our discussion. And also, inshallah, Sheikh will be introducing a new hadith which we'll be discussing after the break. Please join us after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the live Facebook. Inshallah, we'll now go through the book Kamilu Ziyarat by Ibn Qawlwai, Sheikh Ibn Qawlwai, Inshallah. Sheikh, last week we were discussing having the right intention and the right niyyah to go to the Ziyarah and this intention of renewing your um, bayah towards the Ahlul Bayt and, and to show your love to Rasulullah and to show, declare your love for the Ahlul Bayt. Sometimes it's very difficult for people to go on Ziyarah. I mean, a lot of us have mortgages or, or student loans to pay off, um, tickets. I know this year for buying the tickets are an extra 100, 200 pounds compared to last year. Maybe it's to do with the time or even the demand. It can get very, very expensive, Sheikh, for, for people to go and do ziyarah. What does the, uh, the Sharia have to say in regards to that and, 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 and the book as well? Does, do they mention anything in regards to expenses oh. on ziyarah? Ahsantum said Mohsin, this is a very important question and a contemporary, this is a contemporary issues that we face year to year. My first comment would be, the leaders of the groups or the groups that embark upon this noble act of taking Zawar and facilitating for Zawar to go to Iraq. Without doubt, they, they incur expenses. But what we are trying to say is, out of love for Imam al Hussein, if the groups are able to, for example, reduce their profit margins, if they are able to reduce the, uh, the profits that they make, for example, per zawar, in order to facilitate for more and more zawar to go, their reward is with Imam al Hussein. And their reward is with Rasulullah and Sayyidatin Nisa al Alameen. For every pound or every dollar that is reduced within this markup, within this profit margin, Sayyid al Shuhada shall give them. A million fold more, not only in the Akhirah, but inside of the dunya. This is one. To facilitate for more and more people to come such that a person should never come and say that I could not be a Zair of Imam al Hussein because I could not afford a package. Let us try and work. This is one. Number two, a communal initiative where there is funds, where there is donations 
for people who want to go for the ziyana of Imam al Hussein but cannot necessarily afford it. This is Amal Khair. This is where generosity comes. Ani, I see that, okay, I'm going for ziyara and there are a number of people. We start together, we start a fund, we start a trust, for example. And this is a trust which is in the name of Imam al Hussein for the ziyara of Imam al Hussein, such that it can be a revolving trust as well. It can be a revolving trust in the sense that the person is able to, for example, slowly by slowly pay off the amount for the ziyara or slowly by slowly repay back that kardul hasana, for example. So there are a number of things that can be done from a communal level. So if one hand you have the hamalat looking to reduce their margins, on the other hand you have community initiatives, for example, to reduce the uh, or to, to help and to give donations to reduce towards the cost. This is number two. Number three, you have on the other hand, inside of Iraq, for example, there are a lot of the mawakibs, a lot of the Husseinians, they open their doors and they provide and they allow and they facilitate for the zawar to come there without any cost to come and to sleep and to eat and to use their services to facilitate free of charge, facilitate for the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Because they say this is a za'ir of Aba Abdullah. He's come to pledge bay'ah to Aba Abdullah. I will be his khadim. By serving him, I am serving Imam al Hussein. There is this as well. And there is a lot of kalam and perhaps even kalam shadeed on this nidam of the hotels, for example, that set or monopolize certain rates and create, yani, and, uh, they come and they create a monopoly where they set the rates of the hotels at a, at a certain price that is perhaps taking advantage of the season of Arba'in where a normal rate would be, for example, $20. Within Arba'in, you come and you find the rate has spiked up to $100 in this sense. And these are things that we see and these are things that need to be corrected. And Sahih, from a fiqh perspective, nobody is forcing anybody to go and live at the hotel and yes they have got their own costs but kalam again refers back if you are able to reduce your profit margin to facilitate for more zawar the reward is from imam al hussein alayhi salam the owner of jannah himself for everybody plays their part in trying to reduce the costs that are incurred by the zawar in order to facilitate for maximum participation. This is one. On the other hand, if I have to sacrifice some of my luxuries, leave luxuries, even if I was supposed to sacrifice some of the necessities in life in order to perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Because that money that is spent in the way of Imam al Hussein, the khair and the barakat that will come back to you in the dunya before the akhirah, people have seen mu'jizat. And those of rizq have opened up for them from avenues that they never ever imagined by the barakat of Imam al Hussein. And we have millions of stories. Bidun mubalaga. Without mubalaga, millions of stories and the inside of London over here one person I know myself a very good friend of mine struggling with his job in the department in, in a corporate uh, company struggling with his job layoffs and this and that and we still we see with all the brexit and everything happening how unstable yes. the companies are man's took a hit he said I will sacrifice and I will this is Money that is not on the side, it's not part of my savings, I need it. Went, spent six, seven hundred pounds for a ziyara, comes back from Imam al Hussein two, three months later. He's not only, he was of the threat, he was under threat that he's going to get laid off. Leave him being laid off, leaving him his job being stable. Subhanallah, Habibi, guy got a promotion. MashaAllah. He got boosted up his rank to managerial position. Wow. This is Imam al Hussein you are talking about. Indeed. The one whom Allah has given everything in the kawn to be inside his power. So we need to have that iman and we need to have that yaqeen. Let me read for you a hadith from Kamil Ziyarat, Ibn Kawlawayh, 
rahmatullah uh, alayh in this regards to the ziyara and spending in the way of Imam al-Husayn. He says, Hadith al-Sharif an Ibn Sinan. Kultu li Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. Yani Imam al-Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamuh alayhi. Jo'iltu fidaak inna abaka kana yakul fil hajj yuhsab lahu bikul dirham anfakahu alf dirham. Famali man yanfuk fil masir ila abika al-Husayn. Ibn, Ibn Sinan says your to Imam Sadiq, your father used to say the one who spends money or incurs expenses on the way to Hajj for every dirham incurred in expenses, Allah shall reward him with a thousand dirhams. He says, what about spending money or incurring expenses on the way to the ziyarah of your father Hussein? The reward for Hajj is what? Alf dirham. For every dirham you Incurring expenses, Allah will reward you with mm -hmm. alf dirham, thousand dirham. dirham. Yani Imam al Hussein is what? Look at the answer. Fakal alayhi salam, Yabna Sinan, Yuhsab lahu bid dirham, alf wa alf, hatta adda ashura wa yurfa alahu min ad darajat mithluha. It says that for every dirham spent in the way of Imam al Hussein, every dirham. Incurred as an expense, every pound, every dollar incurred as an expense in the way of Imam al Hussein. Allah will reward you with a thousand and a thousand and a thousand and a thousand until the Imam went ten times. Mashallah. Yani a thousand, thousand, alf, alf in Arabic is a million. Yes. So a million times a thousand times a thousand times a thousand times a thousand in the Ashura. I don't think there's enough papers. Numerically, the how many zeros you want to add? Mashallah. Infinity. Allah will reward you with infinity for every dirham spent. Now we know. Baba, it pinches. 400 pounds, 500 pounds, 600 pounds for a ticket to visit Imam al Hussein. Sarahatan is not easy. Was ishq. Yeah. And the Imam al Hussein sees this. I say this to the war of Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein sees this. And uh, he feels the pinch that you have gone through in order to visit him. And when he knows that you have gone through distress to visit him, your Imam smiles at you. Have this yakin, every za'ir, have this yakin. When you go to Karbala and you look at that Kubba and you enter into the Dharih, Imam al Hussein is smiling at you because he sees the distress with which you have gone in order to visit him. Our Mawla, our Mawla is way too generous than to turn somebody who has gone through this much effort. Our Mawla is more generous than to turn him back empty handed. And this Iman and this Yaqeen has to be there. And we all take our, we all play a part in trying to make and facilitate for the Ziyara to be financially easier. And let me take this opportunity. How much time do we have uh, remaining for, for the you, segment? Shaykh, uh, abundance, inshallah. Alf, alf, alf. <laughs> Barakallah feekum. <laughs> Ahibai. The mawakib. When we're walking and majority of the zawar from the west, they walk to Karbala or a number of them walk to Karbala from Najaf. Indeed. So from Najaf to Karbala, this highway that we have, which is very famously known as the highway of heaven. Yeah. And this is the highway of Mu'ajizat. Mu'ajizat, Sayyid Muhsin. Inshallah, if we are blessed with another episode, I'll narrate to you some of the miracles that have happened on this highway of heaven. Tariqul Jannah is known as the highway of heaven where you have the 1400 poles and you're walking. Yes. Mawakib that are there with a smile on their face, they are serving the zawar of Imam al Hussein like you and I with food and with drink. Yes. And those who don't have money for anything, they come and they stand with a box of Kleenex. And the Zahir Imam al Hussein, wipe your sweat, wipe your tear with my Kleenex. Yes. Food in abundance, they force you to eat. Indeed. Plenty of tea. <laughs> Plenty of tea. Chai Abu Ali, Ahsanto. Sayyid Mohsin, let me shed light on one reality. And this is for all our respected Zawar. 
majority of these mawakibs, they are not funded or receive funding from any external institution. Not from the government, not from anybody else. Yes, the marja'iyah has funds that are set aside to help, but to its capacity. Indeed. And you find that a lot of these people within this mawakib, they would spend from their personal money to feed you and I. And these are not people who are rich. These are not people who are sitting on the oil wells. Yeah. These are not people who have assets and investments outside of the country when they are, and they are spending from disposable cash that is there or savings that are not needed. La, we have seen Mawaki people sell furniture. And we are on this channel of Imam al Hussein with the barakah of Imam al Hussein. Qasam billah, people have sold furniture such that they can go with that money, buy a laffa falafel and sell it and uh, provide it, distribute it for the zawar. Yes. You have people who have used up their entire savings and this is hard labor work. Mans are not sitting in office jobs, in air conditions. Labor work, saving money, sweat and toil, they save it together. Save for what purpose? Feed the zawar of Imam al Hussein. We've had people who have delayed the marriages of their children so that they can use that marriage fund in order to feed the zawar of Imam al Hussein, you and I. You and I, we have a responsibility to assist these mawakib. Financially support these mawakib and reduce the financial burden from them. We are in this movement of Arba'in together. Much as we are recipients of hospitality, we also have to contribute back to that hospitality to the extent that we can. And keeping this reality in mind, Ahna at Imam Hussein Development and Relief Foundation, uh, charity established over here with roots inside of Karbala. Yes. We have embarked upon a project known as the Arba'in Water Campaign, where the idea is to distribute one million water bottles. Masha, one million. To the Zawar. Wow, one million. That's, that's Habib Sayyid Mohsin, trust me, with 30 million Zawar coming, one million water bottles is nothing. In fact, one million water bottles divided over 1,400 mawakib is peanuts. Yeah. Yani, sarahatan wa bil Hussein alayhi salam. This is an embarrassment for me to tell you one million bottles. We have 30 million bottles. Zawar, each za'ir at least consumes two or three water bottles a day. We need to be looking at 60 million, 90 million water bottles to be distributed. In any case, Whatever little is done in the way of Imam al Hussein is accepted. And the niyyah has to be khalisa. For we have embarked upon a project of one million water bottles to be distributed towards, or one million water bottles to be supplied. Let me correct myself. One million water bottles to be supplied to the mawkibs, who then distributed to the zawar. And the idea is by supplying the mawkibs with one million water bottles. We are able to reduce the financial burden by that amount on the mawkibs. You and I both have worked in Husseiniyas. A number yeah. of the Zawar, Mushahideen, lovers of Ahlul Bayt have worked in Husseiniyas, have funded majalis, have funded seminars and events. You know it is the smallest and the simplest things that add up. Mm -hmm. Ahna just now from uh, what, we are, uh, what we have uh, confirmed, is that at the moment, the price of one carton of water, one carton is equivalent to a pound 20. Okay. One pound 20. This one carton that costs you one pound 20 can get you 60 water bottles, the okay. 200 milliliter cups. Okay, okay. So, if you can imagine that you are supposed to give out a thousand of these cartons, yani 60,000 water bottles, Yes. This small 200 milliliter water packet, 60,000 is nothing. Mm -hmm. 60,000, Yan, if you're distributing. Is, yeah, Baba, if you were sitting, uh, Santum, it's nothing. Hour, done. Yeah. It's done. Correct? Correct, yeah. 
60,000, that's a thousand. But calculate a thousand times a pound 20, that's a thousand pounds. Yes. Every mokib is using for 60,000. The cost yeah. is considerable when you look at it from their perspective. Mm -hmm. For Ahna, we've taken upon this initiative and with the cooperation of our generous mu'mineen, mu'minat, lovers of Imam al Hussein, let us be a part of the movement of Arba'een and try and contribute towards this great movement such that we are also part of this hospitality. We can say to Imam al Hussein, Ya Aba Abdullah, even we played a small role in quenching the thirst of your Zawar, Ya Hussein. Yeah. For pound 20, person makes whatever contribution that he can, such that the logistics are already there on the ground in terms of getting these cartons of water supplied and distributed to the mawakibs that are there in need and to ensure that we all play our part in reducing the financial burden from the people of the mawakib, insha'Allah. Ahsan Sheikh, I mean, I think it's very... I can't believe how easy it is for someone who may not be participating in the Arba'in walk in the Mashai this year, but for them to still be a part of the Mashai, for them to, you know, help a mokib, be a part of a mokib for just one pound twenty. You know, and that's a box, and you'll get what sixty capsules of water, which is the the little boxes they get with the two hundred ml one. Yeah, Latif. Mashallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah wa shukr. And this is from the barakat of Sayyid Shuhada. Yani every year we have this chance to be a part of this movement of Imam al Hussein, I don't know if I'm going to be alive or not next year. Uh, <laughs> but this is my chance, whether I'm going to Karbala or not going to Karbala, to be a part of this movement to quench the thirst of the Zuwar of Aba Abdullah, number one. And number two, to reduce the financial burden on these mawakib and these servants of Imam al Hussein. This is the idea to reduce the burden uh, from their shoulders in terms of financial strain. Asan, thank you very much, Sheikh and Thank you for inspiring us, inshallah, to get more involved with the Muwakib and inshallah, get more involved with Arba'in. Um, inspiration is to, from Imam al Hussein. Yeah, Asan, and, and to remind us that whatever we invest is not too little. And at the same time, don't worry about you know your budget or don't worry about putting yourself out there or in discomfort financially for Abu Abdullah is the one who will definitely look after us and inshallah will definitely provide before you end let me just give you this one incident that came into my mind please and perhaps this was yesterday during the day and perhaps uh, is uh, the posters and the campaigns for this Arba'in project. It gets distributed on social media and so on and so forth. Had a boy who's probably 12 or 13 years old, not more, 12, 13, according to what he seemed to me. He comes up to me yesterday, he says, Sheikh Abbas. And we have this Deposited. Yes. Ani, if I tell you between you and me, I kiss this coin and put it on my forehead. He gave me a two pound, two pound coins. One pound, one pound, two pounds. He gave me these two coins. He said, Sheikh, Sheikh Abbas, this is from my pocket money and the lunch money. I have these two pounds. I want to be a part of the army of Imam Hussein. Can can I do it with two pounds? When a child comes and he gives what he has in terms of his pocket money. And it is our responsibility that we nurture this type of generosity within our children. I kiss this child on the forehead and I say to him, my brother, you have a faster path towards Jannah than me. Things that have come in. For nothing is too small. And... Nothing is too little in the way of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. This is the Safina to Najat, ya akhi. It is moving towards Jannah. Whether we want to embark on it, upon it or not, is up to us. But, and I'm not saying either that your coming on the Safina to Najat is conditional upon you 
uh, contributing towards the water project. La abadan la. Everybody serves Imam al Hussein in the way that is uh, possible for them. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we seek inspiration even from children. Perhaps they come to become the greatest source of inspiration. Then other individuals that we may be following. Mashallah. Sometimes it's, it's the simplest minds that, how much Allah show us you know, how important and how simple purity can be. Purity, purity That's inside it. of the heart. Sheikh, if someone wants to get in contact or where, where they can find more information about this water campaign. Um, Imam Hussein Development and uh, Relief Foundation is the website. Um, uh, there is constant work being done up because it's a newly established uh, website, but the website is live, www, I believe, at uh, uh, www.ihdrf.org. Imam, Imam Hussein, Development, Relief Fund, IHDRF. Development and Relief Foundation, ihdrf.org. Uh, .org. And uh, there is a Facebook page as well. And, uh, this and is also a there's, project. there's uh, advertising on uh, uh, promotions on our channel as well, I believe. I'm not, yeah, I'm yes, not yes. sure, but <laughs> inshallah, there should be, inshallah, if there is, jazakumullah khairul jaza. And uh, there are brothers that are uh, taking care of uh, ensuring that uh, the event is, um, majority of the people are aware of this and have the opportunity to contribute towards this, inshallah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Salamakumullah. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on uh, this evening on the live Facebook. Inshallah, next week we'll have another hadith that the me and I, me and I, me and the Sheikh will be discussing insha'Allah. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.